Let me tell you something about the sponsorships, though, real quick. We are, I believe, two have come in today. Two are coming in today. Two full $500 sponsors. So we're down to 15 more sponsors. Okay, 15 more sponsors. Now, we got seven days. So that could be two a day coming in. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, but I, I want to share a testimony that Brother Corey shared with me while we are building the stage uh, yesterday, I believe. And I was going to ask you to come up and do it, but you probably, you're, you're good. You want, you, want to, you want to come up here and say it? Well, come on. Welcome, Corey Trujillo, Trujillo or unless you want to high knee it. You want to high knee it. Brother Corey, tell us what you shared with me yesterday dealing with the sponsorship that y'all guys sold, uh, was it Wednesday night? Yeah, Wednesday night. Okay, and what you told me. Come okay. on. <laughs> I told him, so you're going to be up on the stage too, brother. So, there you go. Um, so um, <clears throat> I've been out of work probably five, six, seven weeks, something like that. So when I started coming to church and everything and they announced the uh, conference, well, me and my wife, we talked about it and we wanted to, you know, donate to it, make a sponsorship. And uh, of course I wasn't working. And I was like, yeah, so we tossed it around for a couple of weeks and everything. So um, Wednesday, uh, we made our sponsorship or we, you know, um, Thursday I had an interview and Friday I got a job. Okay. So I start not this Monday, but the following Monday. And, and so the, 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 the connection is, because people will be like, well, what does that have to do with the sponsorship? Well, he believes, because he was obedient to the Lord, he basically was already hired before you even went there, pretty much. The, watch this. And he said, the Lord put it in my heart to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something, guys. Listen, Holy Spirit knows how to connect you from one person to the next person who has what they need for him. And I'm telling you, it was easy. He called me. I said, you got it, man. You're the perfect person for that job. The next day he calls me. I got the job, Pastor Burr. I said, come on. And then he said, I, I believe that it's because I was being obedient to sowing that seed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something, guys. What you sow into the kingdom of God, you can't look. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. <laughs> Love you, man. Come on, let's give Brother Corey a big round of applause. We were talking about this last night, Brother Jebby and I as well. We were sitting there once we finished up everything. And I said, you know, you can't look at even sowing seed. I don't, I don't like to say, even though it is, naturally speaking, you're giving money, right? But it really isn't because that's naturally looking at it. I'm giving money to a church. Okay, I got you. And if you want to stay on that level, you can. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. What I'm saying is there's another level. There's another level where you actually sow seed. Amen. Giving money, maybe, will give you something back. Yeah. Maybe. But sowing seed always has a harvest. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Now watch this. I was telling Brother Jeb, I said, now, we can say, hey, you know what? Man, I'm going to do something for you, and you pay me $100. All right, great. I'll pay you $100, but that's all you're going to get. Watch this. Let's just say you did something for the church. And you're like, I'm not, I'm not going to charge you guys anything. Just like the electrical guy that was in there, he said, I'm not charging you nothing, Pastor, bro, whatever it is that you want. I said, okay, that's fine. The thing is, you could just receive what a natural piece of paper with numbers on it will give you. You can. Or you can say, I'm going to invest into the kingdom of God. I'm going to sow that seed and receive way more than just a $100 check. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? Are you here with me? What you received from that 500 is nothing what's about to come into your life. Now, I can give you. Watch this. I, can, I don't know if it's okay with him, but I can give you how much an, an hourly wage he's going to get. And then you multiply the numbers. Is it okay to share it? 25? Amen. $25 an hour. Amen. Some of us are excited because we get $10 and $11. Ooh, Hercules, Hercules. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. 
But $25 an hour, some of y'all may faint. No, 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 you shouldn't. Why? Because supernaturally, you're a supernatural being. You're believing God in the supernatural. Come on, somebody. You don't, sow, you don't give money to the church. You sow seed into the kingdom. You hear what I'm saying? That's what we do. We, don't, I've, we stopped giving money a long time ago. I told her, I said, we don't give money to nobody. I mean, we do to people out there who maybe, you know. But in the kingdom of God, we sow seed. We sow seed. So I say, I sow seed. I have heard stories, Brother Hector. Brother Hector's got some amazing stories, too. Amazing. They sowed a $500 seed. Was it last year or the year before? The year before. When you paid off your buildings. They sold a $500 seed into the conference, and by the next week, wasn't it? They bought another building, and they paid off some stuff. Come on. I'm talking about double-digit $1,000 stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Brother Jebby's got some stories, too, as well, sharing with me about some stuff that was trying to go on, trying to hinder him. But the whole entire time, I said, no, Brother Jebby, don't, don't look at it like that. Don't look at it like that. Here's what you do. You're sowing seed. You, you keep your composure. Come on. Because I'm going to tell you this, and he, he may not want me to share this, but I'll tell you because I love him. He's a seed sower. Weekly. He does that. He helps make all this happen here, like a lot of you guys do in here, too. Don't ever look at it as giving money. You don't ever give money to a church. If you do, that's fine. That's okay. But move up another level. Start sowing seed into the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. You'll see what he does for you. Last night, right? When, did you say, man, it just happened where, like, it was like, hey, praise God here. Here's this and that. It was easy. Yeah. What am I saying? Are you saying, Pastor Bro, we can buy a miracle? No, I'm not telling you you can buy a miracle. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying just sow seed and let the seed do the work for you. you the Bible even says it. The farmer, when he sows a seed, he don't worry about how it's going to grow. So the word says. He sows it, and then it says, and then he goes to sleep and doesn't even worry about it. Why? Because the seed knows what, is, what to do all on its own. Amen. We have any seed sowers in this house? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Saben cómo sembrar la semilla? ¿Verdad que sí? All right. I could give you another type of seed that will grow on its own, but I'm not going to go there because we don't need to talk about that. Anyway, so praise the Lord. All I'm saying is you sow seed, and the seed and the ground Know how to work together, and they will produce the harvest. Amen. Amen. An apple has many seeds in it. All you need to do is sow one seed from that apple, and you can get an entire tree. Amen. 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 All right. That ain't the message, but anyways, I just wanted to talk about that and give you all guys a testimony on how this stuff works. And here's what I'm telling you. Just believe God. Be one of the 15. Be one of the 15 to say, I'm going to believe God for $500 in my hand. Listen to me, if a widow, if a single widow that comes to our church that barely has enough to pay what she needs to pay, if she can believe God for a $500 sponsor, and she did, and she sold it today. Amen. Come on, somebody. Are you here? If a couple who has been struggling a little bit for about six years can come into my office this morning and say, we've got a $500 seed, so can you. That right, Brother Martin? Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Listen, this is all supernatural, guys. You can't think of it naturally at all, at all, at all, at all. Because what you're going to receive back is going to blow your mind. Amen. It's going to blow your mind. You, can't, you couldn't even think about what God's going to do. I'm talking about boom. Listen, the same God that parted the Red Sea is the same God that's working in your life right now. The same God that made Peter walk on water is the same God that's working in your life right now. Amen. Are y'all here with me? You understand what I'm saying? That same God. It's not different God. It's not a different God. The same God that fed 5,000 people can feed your, your family of five. Yeah. Yeah. You may not be having to serve 5,000, but you only have five. That same God that fed them will feed you. Amen. But somebody's got to believe supernaturally. Como vamos? Como va a ser eso? Don't worry about como. Just come. Just eat the thing. Praise the Lord. Just eat the word. Believe the word. Receive the word. Because it's supernatural. Your mind cannot figure this out. Okay, try to figure out how Peter walked on water. Try to figure that out. It happened. 
I said, it happened. <laughs> Come on. I I'm trying to get y'all guys up here so we can think on another level. Everybody else is trying to think down here, trying to scrounge, trying to scrape. We don't need to do that. Amen. We just need to receive, believe, and speak. And vamonos. There it is. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Be brave enough and courageous enough to say, I'm going to do this. Praise God. The same God that resurrected Lazarus from the dead. The same God that healed Na Na Naaman. You remember Naaman? He had leprosy in 1 Kings. Was it 1 Kings? Yeah, 2 Kings chapter 5. He had leprosy, brother Corey. Leprosy, skin was falling off of him. I have somebody that skin is a little thin, and anytime he scratches himself up against something, he gets a little thing. Okay, Naaman was worse than that. Naaman didn't even have to scrape himself up against anything. Skin was just falling off on his own. He had an issue of leprosy, okay? And to the point where even his nose would fall off. And Michael Jackson, you know what I'm saying? Boom. You know, it's RIP Michael Jackson. Anyway, so uh, Naaman was this person. He went to the prophet expecting that the prophet would come out of his house, lay hands on him, rub some oil on him. Not diddy oil. Holy Ghost oil, and, and, and I mean saying lay hands on him and rub some oil on him, speak a word over him. That's what Naaman was expecting. He's leper. He had this skin disease. He was about to die. Yeah. Prophet, I need a miracle. You know what the prophet did? From his bedroom, told his servant, tell him to go dip in the Jordan River seven times. <coughs> Naaman was like, I, I rode all the way down here, a thousand miles, or however long he had to ride. I want the prophet to come out here and touch my hands. The servant says, you don't need him to do that. He already gave you an instruction. He told you to go dip in the Jordan River seven times. Did you know Naaman got mad? His arm was about to fall off. Man, I, I ain't going to do that, man. He should have came out here and touched me. He should have came out here and prayed for me at least. He should have rubbed some oil on my head or something, blew a ram's horn or something. Should have called Jebby or something. Was he just yelling commands from his bedroom in the bed on his sheets, uh, in a pajama stuff? Hey, go dip in the river seven times. He got mad. He said, I ain't doing that. So he took off and his servant said, boss. Why aren't you going to do what he told you to do? He said, man, I ain't going to do that. I mean, how I many know sometimes we get a little prideful? Ah, I ain't Pastor Bird's up there just yelling stuff at me, just expecting for me. I, I, I ain't yelling at you. It's the ram's horn right here. Ooh. Pretty good. I was just mimicking what I heard over here. I mean, I wasn't mimicking the <laughs> but just that. So... There's a ram's horn that all of you guys got in here. It's called the Holy Spirit, the power that is at work within you. Yeah. And Soraya, sometimes all you just got to tell people, you just got to say something. It may come out in the form of words, but in the spirit, it comes out like this. Ooh. Yeah. In the spirit. In the natural, it sounds like go throw the trash. To your kids, you know what I'm saying? Go pick up your, go pick up them toys off the, off the floor, Remy. No. Ooh. <laughs> Next thing you know, <laughs> I walk into the, the living room. Hmm, it's picked up. Thank you, Miha. Appreciate that. She, she does this weird look. She, like, she goes like this. Man. So she, she don't like what I tell her, but it doesn't matter. The ram's horn blows, and things are going to get done. Amen. Come on, somebody. Are you here? You hear what I'm saying? So Naaman, he gets upset. I'm not going to do that. But the servant, thank God for servants. Come on, somebody. The servant said, Master, boss, I think you should do that. Because if he would have told you to go dip in the most glorious of rivers, because, see, at that time, the Jordan River was the dirtiest of rivers. Remember when I told you guys sometimes... You got to face the ugly. Sometimes you got to get to the ugly before you get to the beauty. 
The prophet told them to go into the dirtiest of rivers that they had there. And they had some other nice, crystal clear, clean ones there. And the servant said, boss, if he would have told you to go dip into the most beautifulest of rivers, you would have done it. And he said, yeah, but he told me to go into the dirtiest, man. You know, how dare he do that to me? And the, and the servant said, no, I think you should do that, boss. I think you should go and do it. He said, you know what? Okay. He goes down one time. Comes up, still a leper. Goes down, comes up, second time, still a leper. Probably even some skin fell off in the water in there. Third time, goes down, comes up, still nothing. Some of us are like that. Well, see, I ain't getting healed. What? I came to church one time. I ain't getting healed. I done sold $500. See, it ain't no. Okay, hold on, hold on. You're on your third dip. He goes down again, fourth, comes up. See what I tell you, man. No, wait, boss. He told you seven times. Not four. Don't stop. He goes down fifth, comes back up. Where's my finger? Floated off over there. But the servant's still looking at him. He said, seven, boss. He goes down again. Six. Comes back up. See? Stuff. No, no. He said seven. One more time. Just one more time. I don't know if I want to do this, man. I've done dipped in this dirty water six times. No, boss, but he said seven. No, honey. He said seven. No, mijo. Seven. No, Soraya, seven. Sister Sandra, seven. One more time. I can't. I don't want to. No. One more time. I'm tired. I don't want to do this anymore. I've been praying. I've been believing. Okay, no, no, no. One more time. He goes down, goes down. He comes up on the seventh time, healed. His body, the Bible said his body got restored like a baby skin. It didn't just get restored as an adult human. It got restored as a baby skin. You mean to tell me that that same God that did that for Naaman? You don't believe the same God can heal you, that can restore you? That same God will do the same for you, will turn things around for you when you wanted to quit, when you wanted to give up, when you're trying to throw in the towel on the sixth dip? You were trying to throw in the towel on the fourth dip. You still have three more dips to go. When you dip, I dip, we dip. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Okay? (laughs) You know? You got three more. You better dip. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, oh my gosh, Pastor Bird, like he was twerking up there. No, no, I'm telling you, I'm just dipping. <laughs> dipping in the Holy Ghost, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody just needs to dip three more times. Somebody needs to dip two more times. Somebody just needs to dip one more time. And you're about to see what God's about to do. And that one more time may very well be next Sunday, next Sunday night. Next Monday night, next Tuesday night, supernatural encounter with the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, the ram's horn's been blown already. So there is already a call, praise God. There's already a sound that told your enemy you're coming, praise God. There's already a sound that's been released that there's a miracle happening right now, praise God. Just dip one more time, praise God. Just one more time and you will be healed. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't give up. Praise God. You dip. Y'all going to go home and say, man, Pastor Bird said for me to dip. We're like, what you doing, Brother Hector? Or she ain't going to call you, Brother Hector. ¿Qué está haciendo, Hector? Pues estoy dipping. <laughs> Walking around the house like this. <laughs> what you doing? I'm dipping, bro. I'm dipping. I'm dipping. <laughs> Did y'all ever see that? One more time, dipping. You got to do it. That's what the prophet said. 
And the prophet, when a prophet is led by the Holy Spirit, you don't listen to the prophet, you listen to the Spirit. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Because you're about to, Brother John, you're about to experience something so, so supernatural in your life, my brother. Amen. You've never seen anything like this. You've never heard anything like this. You've never experienced anything like this. But God's going to do it for you. Amen. Amen. This stage got me on the flow, bro. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm like, man, I can just, I told him I made crowd surf. <laughs> if it catch me, sorry. <laughs> Somebody said they're going to move out the way, brother. Corey, don't be, don't be. <laughs> No, it was Brother Jeffy. Brother Jeffy. Hey, if he decides to jump, just get out the way. I said, no, nah, bro, don't do that. Don't do that. Just crowd surf me. Ready? No. <laughs> Woo, praise God. Anyways, okay, cool. Man. Ah. Ooh, man, praise God. Whew. I feel the Holy Spirit just flowing right now. Mm. Guys, um, mm, mm, mm. I was, I, was asking, I was asking God about revival, right? I may not even go to these scriptures, Sister Becky, because I'm flowing right now, okay? So just flow with me. Um, I was asking God about revival. I mean, I understand what that means, you know, revival. But I was asking God, how does that pertain to us? Or what does it just mean? Or what's your heart about it? And God said, just look to Abraham, who is the father of our faith. He said, I told him that he was going to be the father of many nations. Abraham came to God and said, do you not see how old I am? He was 90 or when he told him this, he was 84 years old. No, 86, I'm sorry. He was 86 years old when God told him, you're going to be a father of many nations. Abraham said, I'm already old in age. I can't produce anymore. He says, and then have you seen my wife? She's right there with me. She was 10 years younger than him. And God said, and, and at that time, and at that time when God spoke that to, he wasn't Abraham yet. He was Abram. Abram. Watch this. When God said, you are now Abraham, he added the H. And some of y'all like ham, right? Okay. So he added the H, which was this. The H was a representation of the Holy Spirit. Um, it, it's the age represents the breath of God. Okay. And, and the way to describe or put into play the breath of God is to put an H in there. So God, when he said, your name will now be Abraham, when he said that to him, it was as if he's saying, this ain't going to be done in your power. Amen. Yeah. This ain't going to be done in your might. This is going to be done by the Holy Spirit. When Corey got saved in my office, he went from Corey to Corey. So now you can call Corey. <laughs> Monique. Honey. Woo! Praise the Lord. Anyways, watch this. Abram, Abram had every natural idea, I can't have kids, and neither can my wife. So how's this going to work? So God said, I, I need you, I need you to not only see what I'm saying, I need you to say what I'm saying. So he said, you will now be Abraham. And Abram understood what he was saying. He said, you added an H in there because that means the breath of God. That means that the Holy Spirit is going to do this. Yes. Watch this. Right there on the spot, Abram, Abram started calling himself Abraham. 
he went and told his wife, honey, God changed my name. <laughs> and she said, oh, really? To what? To Abraham. <laughs> she like, yeah, okay. Because she knew what that meant. That means father of many nations. He says, mira, mira Abraham, mira Abraham, Abraham. You and I know that you or me can't have no children. We've been trying. It's been fun, but nothing's happening. But you're telling me that God said you're Abraham now? What are people going to think? When you go out in town and say, hey, I'm now Abraham, they're going to be like, si, hombre, where are your kids? And then he says, well, then God calls Abraham and says, come here, man. I want you to look out into the sky. Come on, the kids are having revival back there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want you to look out into the sky, and I want you to count how many stars you see. Abraham's like, I see a lot of them. Because he, he just doesn't want you to see. He wants you to say. Yeah. And what you see, you can say. So he counts the stars. He says, where as many stars as you can count, that's how many descendants you're going to have. Amen. And he says, if you could count the grain of sand on the ground. He goes, can you count them? He's like, that's impossible. He says, well, however many grains of sand you can see right here, and as far as you can see, that's how many descendants you're going to have. That's how many children you're going to have. Amen. That's what you're going to have. I mean, you think about that, man. I'm, I'm over here telling Brother Martin, bro, you're healed in the name of Jesus. And we told you last Sunday, you're healed. You were up here. We had hands laid on you. There was about 15 people laying hands on you. And I told you, you're not going to, you're, you're Abraham now. You're healed Whole, well, complete. It can't, that can't change. You're going to have to go back out there in the city, regardless of what people think about you, and tell them, even though you're walking like this, you have to tell them, I'm healed. Yeah. And who cares what they say? No, hombre, mira, mira, estás todo tuerco. No, that's the word we used last Sunday. No, no, that's not the word. That's not, that's me, something, anyways, praise the Lord. That's, okay, so they're going to see something, right? They're going to see something different than what you see. Yeah. Abraham seen something different than what everybody else seen. But he stood his ground, and from that point forward, he called himself Abraham. For 14 years, he called himself Abraham. And within those 14 years, he didn't see no child being birthed. He didn't see nothing coming. He didn't see Sarah pregnant. And not. It even got to the point where Sarah said, I'm tired of this. If God said we're going to have kids, then it might not be through me. So you know what? Why don't you go ahead and sleep with the maiden? Abraham's dumb. He should have said no. <laughs> because when God says something, it will happen. Amen. And it's in his timing. Come on, somebody. Amen. But he said it. And you got to stay faithful to what God said. For 14 years, guys, that's a long time to be sitting there calling yourself Abraham. And how many people were calling him a liar? How many people were laughing at him? How many people were saying, nah, bro, you're, you're, that's, that's not, how's that? You, nothing's happened. I'm Abraham. How many times have you encountered that opposition? People looking at you, oh, that ain't going to happen. That ain't going to work. Como que vas a, you're going to own your own business one day, brother Jesse. Pastor, Pastor Bert then spoke that over you. You're going to own the company. Y mira, no ha pasado. It's only been six months, bro. Praise the Lord. Give me, give me at least 14 years. <laughs> I've spoken words over you guys before. A lot of you in here. Yeah. Respiratory system, be healed. I spoke to you right here. Mm-hmm. You, were, you were right here when the, when the altar was right here. <laughs> when the altar was right here. Them days are over. Praise the Lord. Okay. When it was right here, and you were right here, and, I, and you stood up, and I said, your respiratory system is healed. You just got to believe and receive that. Every day you tell your respiratory system to be healed. Amen. Don't believe me. Believe the Holy Spirit that said that in that, in that session. Right? 
Come on, Sister Christy. How many times you've heard something that the Lord told you right there? Many times. But you got to keep believing. Be faithful. And it'll happen. Abraham, 14 years, still not. But, and he made a mistake. He ended up sleeping with the lady over there, with the maiden. They had a, they had a child anyways. But well, that let Abraham know that it wasn't his system that was wrong. <laughs> he had a child with somebody. <laughs> so it must have been Sarah. Anyways, 14 years later comes. They have a child. Sarah, she laughed at one point and even got hurt. Why are you laughing? See, George, George Lopez didn't get that statement. He didn't. It was God. Why are you laughing? <laughs> why are you so sad? Or is it? Anyway, so, anyway, why are you crying? Anyway, so, anyways, forget that. <laughs> forget that. Erase that. Anyway, so, he, she laughed. God said, why are you laughing? Boom. He's, she's like, man, well, I ain't going to have no, you see how old I am? Blah, 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 blah. He's like, don't even worry about that. God's not worried about your, what you can do. God's not concerned uh, about all that. God's concerned about do you believe him or not? God's concerned, do you believe what I'm telling you? Because, number one, your word tells you that God is not a man that he shall lie. And if he said it, then he's going to do it. But you just got to hold, you just got to be faithful because that's the test. That was the test that Peter had when he was walking to Jesus on the water. It didn't have to do, when he said, oh, ye of little faith, he wasn't talking about an amount. He was talking about in length. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, ye of little faith has more to do with your faithfulness than it has to do with your amount of it. Because I'm telling you, there are people who have been walking faithfully, supposedly, for 10 years, and then on the 11th year, they, they get out. You know what God considers that? Even though you've been walking for 10 years, or even though 15 years, and all of a sudden just get out, he calls that little faith. Because little time. Our job is to be faithful and keep walking because you will encounter the supernatural. You will encounter revival. Here's what happened. God, when I asked God about revival, God said, I brought Abraham, Abraham and Sarah revival. And changed her name to Sarah. And watch this. They were able to produce children at 100 years of age. Supernaturally. So if you're in here right now, you think things can't change for you. I'm here to tell you, we all in here serve a God that can turn your life around and blow people's minds. Supernaturally. Supernaturally. If you don't believe me, ask Brother Jebby. He's overcome things. I personally know Brother, Brother Jesse. Come on. Brother Corey. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Brother Henry. Brother Henry's got some testimony stuff that he needs to share at one point. I know I always say that. But he's got some stuff, too, that God has turned his life around. I mean, drastically. Amen. Supernaturally. He sometimes can't even explain it. <laughs> He'd be like, man, I just can't. Like, it's just incredible. Yeah. Why? Because God is a supernatural God, and he's going to make this supernatural stuff happen for you. We just got to believe. Come on, somebody. Are you here? We just got to believe. We just got to believe all things work together for the good for those who love them and are called. You've already been called. You've been called already. In the name of Jesus, right now, I take your name from Abram to Abraham. What you couldn't do before, Holy Spirit is going to help you do it now. What you couldn't accomplish before, Holy Spirit is going to help you accomplish it now. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. Somebody say I receive and believe that. Now this last thing, 2 Timothy 3.16. Pull that one up, please. I'm going to show you this. Watch this. This is why I can believe and receive this word and understand what God's talking about when he's talking about revival and Abraham and all this good stuff. All scripture is 
God breathed. You see that? All scripture is God breathed. And is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness. <sighs> My gosh, man. Come on, somebody. This is what God was doing for Abraham. He had to teach him. He even had to rebuke him. He had to correct him. And he was training in righteousness to the point that the Bible says that his faith, Abraham's faith was counted as righteousness. And now in Galatians chapter 5, he calls Abraham the father of our faith. And this is back then when he got to experience the Holy Spirit right there in his life. Not like, not, I mean, well, not like anybody else could have back then, but not like we can now. So in essence, guys, if you look at this right now, everybody in here, your name got changed. It has an H in it now. Because of the fact that you got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. And now you are a candidate for supernatural lifestyle to happen Amen. every single day of your life. But you cannot let everybody else who can't see that you're a father of many nations. You can't let all these circumstances try to tell you, hey, bro, it ain't working. Yeah. Because I always tell you this, guys. Nothing that you do in the kingdom of God is a waste of time. Nothing that you do for the kingdom of God is a waste of time. And I'm here to tell you right now, in the name of Jesus, you're about to encounter the supernatural breakthrough that you've been believing God for. And I believe that some of you are already experiencing it already. So you keep walking, guys. You keep walking. You're not, oh, ye of little faith. No, no, no. Oh, ye of great faith because I'm being faithful. Praise yeah. God. I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep declaring. I'm going to keep sowing. I'm going to keep saying. I'm going to keep seeing. I'm going to keep seeing that word because every scripture and every word that God speaks through this Bible is God. <sighs> God breathed. God breathe, praise God. This is what keeps the H in your name right here. This is what keeps the H in your name. <laughs> Why? Because it's God breathed. It's alive. And it has power. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It can do what it needs to do. Are you here with me tonight? I mean, I'm sorry, this morning? Did y'all ever see that? Supernatural. Come on, somebody. Let's stand to our feet. Let's get out of here.